Hello everyone and welcome to the last game we'll be showing from round 5 of the 2020 Candidates Tournament. Uh, it's Anish Giri versus Fabiano Corwana and it's a, it's a really exciting game. It features two very exciting pause the video moments which uh, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy. Well, one more than the other but uh, uh, they, they are quite enjoyable. Now, uh, before we check out the game, uh, here's their head-to-head -head score as you all enjoy that so much. So, prior to this game, uh, Caruana and Anish Giri played uh, a lot of classical games. Uh, Fabiano won 3, Giri won won two and 26 of uh, the games were drawn and if you include classical uh, if you include rapid and exhibition games then Caruana beat Giri 9 to 5 with 38 draws so uh, a slight advantage for for Fabi in in classical time format and also uh, let's enjoy some close-ups before we start with the game here's a nice close-up of Fabi so let's just enjoy that for a second uh, and also uh, a very nice photo of Anish Giri so let's uh, let's check out that that one as well so there we have it, and now let's uh, let's uh, see what happens here. Uh, Giri opens with d4, and Fabi once again goes for the Slav. We have c4 and c6. The Slav defense is on the board. Knight f3. We have knight to f6 and e3 now, preparing to uh, develop the light square bishop. Bishop to f5, developing the light square bishop before closing the cage, and knight to c3 now. We have e6, and now that the bishop can no longer go back, Giri immediately goes after it. Uh, knight to h4. We have bishop to e4, uh, f3, bishop to g6, and now uh, mostly played move here is queen to b3. We're oh, oh, with or without including knight captures on g6 first, but queen to b3 is the main idea. But here Giri goes for bishop to d2. It's a much rarer move, and uh, with it he hopes to throw Fabio off guard. Uh, but Fabi just continues developing bishop to e7. Now uh, some nasty discoveries could be possible if this knight ever moves. So Giri eliminates the bishop now. Uh, knight captures h captures and the queen to c2 now. Uh, now saying that he will maybe castle queenside as uh, he already made way for the king. Knight b to d7 by Fabi and here we have castles queenside by Giri. And there is one game in the database where queen to c7 was played but here Fabi goes for knight to b6 and it is as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see let's see what happens. Uh, Giri now, uh, of course he doesn't want the position on the queenside to open up uh, as he, he, he just castled queenside so of course c5 he wants to close it. Knight b d7 and now king b1. A nice prophylactic move getting king to a safer square. Uh, and here, while you could uh, start uh, breaking up this pawn chain with b6, Fabi first prepares it with queen to b8. Now b6 is definitely an option, but also you are just threatening to, to gobble up that pawn on h2. So Giri plays h4 and now g5 by Fabi, as the rook is still und uh, undefended, the, the, the bishop has been, hasn't been developed, so the rooks are not connected. So bishop back to e1 by Giri. Uh, defending the h4 pawn twice and now even g4 by Fabi. Uh, we have e4 by Giri striking in the center, g captures on f3, g captures and now finally b6, Fabi starts opening up the position. Uh, e captures on d5, we have e captures on d5 and now c captures on b6, even that. We have a captures on b6 now opening up the a file uh, for the rook, Fabi will play something like queen to a7 to, to pressure the a2 pawn uh, and now knight to a2. Uh, probably with the idea that uh, he wants to either shift this knight to c1 to help out with the defense of the a2 pawn or he maybe wants to wants to get it maybe to g4 uh, to g3 and then to f5 so first queen to a7 by fabi threatening just queen captures and now instead of going back giri decides that he will use the knight so instead b3 now defending the a2 pawn uh, and it uh, now uh, leaves the queen stuck here to guard the a2 pawn, but at least you can move the knight now. We have knight to h5 by Fabi, and now knight to g3. Uh, just offering a trade, hoping for captures, captures, then he gets this uh, beautiful bishop, and then the other bishop can go to this diagonal, and so on. So instead, we have g6 by Fabi, uh, Giri trades, knight captures on h5, uh, instead of pawn, rook captures on h5, and now uh, f4, a, a really strong move by Giri. Uh, preparing to, to kick away uh, the rook from h5 and also uh, start to develop those bishops. King to f8 by Fabi, getting uh, the king to, to, to a safer location uh, with ideas of maybe king g7 artificially castling. Bishop to e2, kicking the rook back and now rook to h8. And here we reach uh, the first uh, critical position of the game. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out what you would uh, play here with white, but it's an incredibly difficult uh, task, so uh, you know, uh, don't o overdo it. Uh, 
Uh, so for those of you who found F5, you 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 should also congratulate yourself because it's such a such a disgusting engine line that uh, there is no way anyone plays this. But it's interesting uh, during the live stream, Magnus Carlsen said that he wouldn't be surprised if White was just winning here. Uh, they couldn't really figure out why, but it it doesn't seem like Black has anything to do. But it's hard to find uh, what White can do here. So for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, F5. This is the critical line, but it's uh, it's so difficult to calculate. G5 by black. Now, of course, you cannot capture because you lose the rook here. And now bishop to F3 first. Now the rook is defended. Uh, G captures on H4 and now bishop to G3. Uh, this is how you, you, you gain development. Now, of course, black cannot capture because of rook captures on H8. So rook to H6, uh, getting the rook to, to help out with the defense of the C6 pawn. It's uh, it's not the target yet because the queen has to keep an eye on the A2 pawn, but uh, better, better safe than sorry. Bishop to F4 kicks the rook back, rook H7, and now rook to H2. Now the rook here defends the pawn here. Now there's the threat of capturing this, and uh, white will just have a, a, an incredible game here. For example, this bishop can come to E5, rook can come either to E1, maybe even to H1 to double up on the H file. Uh, a lot of good things can happen here for white, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, hard to decide uh, on such a move. So basically from this position where the bishops are here and your rooks are not coordinated well, the queen is stuck guarding the a2 pawn, uh, you would reach this position where the bishops are nicely placed here. The rook help out, helps out with the defense of the pawn and black didn't really do anything. So basically white got uh, five free moves without black actually being able to do anything. So this is the, the, the real... Uh, uh, secret behind the position. However, it's in incredibly hard to find. Giri first played bishop to d3, now with ideas of preparing f5, and now c5 by Fabi. Uh, we have bishop to c3, opening up, uh, hoping to open up this diagonal. So Fabi does it. Captures on d4, captures on d4, and the bishop to f6 now. Fabi seems to have solved all of his problems, but uh, again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for Giri while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, you should definitely congratulate yourself because it's a move that both Giri and Caruana missed. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to b5. Seems crazy uh, that s s such a move can, can take down a, a player like Caruana, but it is in the position. Point is, uh, you're threatening the simple tactics of bishop captures, you remove the defender of this bishop and then you win a piece. So uh, black obviously has to do something about that. So bishop captures on d4, of course, now rook captures on d4. Uh, and now, uh, n after the knight moves, now you have this f5 move. Just continue attacking g5 and now rook to a4. And now you will overload the black queen. For example, if the queen moves, queen b8, now you go queen to b2, attacking the knight here and the rook. And there's not much you can do here. For example, if king g7 defending, then rook to g1 is incredibly strong, threatening just captures and you will win the win the knight here. For example, if rook captures on a4, you can just play even h captures on g5. And now the, there's not much to do here. Uh, rook, rook h2 uh, attacking the queen, then queen captures on f6. King to f8, and now of course bishop captures on a4, and at the end of this variation you are, you are up a piece. Uh, so another thing you could do here after queen to b2 uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, moving with something like king to g7 you could try the rook captures on a4 immediately but then the tzvishin tsuk queen captures on f6 and you're still threatening to capture this rook and this rook uh, so you would have to go for rook captures here uh, rook h captures on h4 but now uh, again uh, you get rook to g1 and uh, there's uh, again not much not much black can do here uh, you cannot move this rook anywhere uh, from the h file because well queen h8 check just picks up the queen here and uh, not not a lot of things you can do the the rook uh, is coming in the position and that will that will be it so really and, and your your rook is hanging so you do have to do something about it after rook moves let's say to a8 queen captures on g5 attacks here goes to g7 the pawn is coming here uh, bishop covers the eight it's a uh, de dead loss for black so really exciting stuff after Fabi's bishop to f6, but Giri misses it. G Giri plays bishop captures on f6 instead. We have knight captures on f6 and now f5. Finally, Giri breaks through. G captures on f5, bishop captures on f5, and now b5 by Fabi. 
again saying, okay, you have a nice position, Giri, but your queen is still stuck uh, guarding this pawn here, so you have to do something about it. So he does. Giri goes rook to h2. Now the queen can finally be activated, and now rook to h5. Uh, now keeping the queen uh, stuck guarding the bishop here. So rook to e2 by Giri, uh, and now d4. Uh, just uh, fur further pushing. Uh, we have rook to e5, uh, a nice rook lift that now defends the bishop. Now the queen can finally move, uh, but now Fabi finds knight to g4. Now, of course, if you capture, you lose the rook, and the knight is now coming to e3. So here, rook to c5 with the threat of rook to c8 check, but Fabi goes for knight to e3 either way. So again, what do you do here? Rook to c8 check. Only good move for Giri. We have captures, captures with check. And now not king here uh, because of rook to g1, king to e7 instead. So again, uh, what do you do here? Rook to c1, you have to get the rook to safety. And now comes knight to d5. As the threat is just rook to c7 check to win the queen. So knight to d5 guarding this. And now Giri goes for rook to e1 with check. Fabi again blocks, knight to e3, rook to c1. We have knight back to d5, rook to e1 with check, knight to e3. Uh, and after rook to c1, it was in this position on move 42 that Giri and Caruana agreed to a draw. So really, really tough game, really complicated game. Uh, Fabi had to spend uh, a lot more time in the opening. Giri out prepared him, but then when it was when it was time to strike, Giri had two chances. Okay, that f5 move uh, not not likely for anyone to find, uh, but uh, uh, that that bishop to b5 move that that seems to be uh, outright winning that that was definitely Giri's chance. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Here, there's no real way to to look for advantage. If you try something like uh, well, w what could you try? Let's say knight back to d5 threatens this. We have uh, we have something for white. Maybe maybe you try this to to get rid of the defender and then win the queen. But then just knight check. Uh, wins wins the bishop or or you have to give up the exchange so not much you can do there and for example if bishop g4 maybe attacking the rook try to go for the knight this way then rook e5 you you no longer have any rook e1 checks and if bishop f3 just knight c3 check again just winning for black if you move you're you're getting queen captures on h2 and if you if you don't then you just have to give up the exchange with the rook captures and you're just worse so yeah, after rook to c1, they drew the game, and uh, here are the standings now after five rounds of the uh, FIDE Candidates 2020 tournament. There we have it. Uh, in first place, uh, we have Jan Nepomniši with 3.5 out of 5 points after winning his game against Van Gaal, uh, followed by Maxim Vashiel Lagrav with 3 points, then Fabiana Corwana, Van Gaal, and Alexander Grishuk with 2.5, so on 50%, and then with 2 points, Ding Liren, uh, Ale uh, Kirill Alexenko, and Anish Giri. So those are the standings after five rounds, but it's a, it's a long tournament, long way to go. Uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. So uh, really really exciting stuff. Uh, uh, and what do you think of the tournament so far? Do you agree with uh, with the statement Alexander Grishuk made in an interview? He said that uh, he definitely thinks that uh, the the tournament should be uh, either stopped or postponed. That uh, uh, that it's not it's not without cause that all of the other big events uh, in the world have been canceled or postponed and that he just doesn't feel feel right playing in the tournament everyone wearing masks uh, there's a lot of security everywhere and it, it just uh, uh, kills the mood of the tournament and he says that uh, w with all that in mind uh, being on 50 percent that he he is very happy with his his result but he definitely thinks that uh, the, the tournament shouldn't have happened so what are your thoughts on this? And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, see, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Whitbeck Holdings, LLC, Simon Johansson, uh, Harry Willis, Gleb Kopchenkov, and Randall uh, Ingersoll for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE Candidates Tournament. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent uh, start of your week.